Hi, welcome back to Green Theory. Today we'll be talking about the Pila company, most famous for its compostable foam case. The company's made and sold over a million of these biopolymer-based, flax-based phone cases since opening the product line in 2011. They also have a slew of other products under their name, including Canopy, which is a liquid screen protector, Ethos, an electromagnetic wave breaker for the back of your phone, AirPods cases, even a line of sunglasses, which currently goes under the name Sway. The company also acquired Barksby and Habitat, which are organic soap lines that have compostable packaging in the year 2020. And they released their own countertop composting machine called Lomi. Though it's not the first in this class, the sleek design definitely complements the company's curated vibe. The products seem to fit together and they touch into a lot of different categories. So let's dive in and find out a little bit more about the Pila company, what they do, and what we can learn from them. The parent company, Open Mind Developments, was actually founded in 2007 after its founder, Jeremy Lang, went to Hawaii and witnessed some oceanic plastic with his family firsthand. There are a lot of things about the Pila company that really excite me. For example, their mission statement reads, to educate and inspire the global community of people who are committed to making a positive impact on our planet. Pila is dedicated to the concepts of cleaning both existing pollution and preventing further plastic pollution from happening to our Earth. I think this approach to sustainability is a lot more rare and is definitely the key to having a green future for everyone. Pila has also done the right thing in terms of joining the correct organizations and donating their money where it really counts. For example, they're certified climate neutral, which means that the company's carbon footprint is calculated and then they pay to offset that carbon at the end of every year. Along the same lines, they do life cycle analysis of other products, which accounts for and shows all the carbon usage in the whole supply chain and even for end of life. They're also a certified B corporation, which means that their B impact score is over an 80. Some critics say that these standards are not strict enough, but sometimes something is better than nothing. Pila also has launched something called the 360 program. Anyone can send back Pila products to the company after they've reached end of life or become broken, and they can be upcycled into new cases, composted, or disposed of in a proper way. Using a byproduct that would otherwise be burned as waste, I think is a really big deal and we should definitely celebrate that. I think there's a lot of waste and room for more efficiency. I think it's important to note here that flax stick and hemp stick products are also backyard and industrially compostable in organic environments. You may need to be patient if you're throwing one of these cases in your backyard though. It can sometimes take two to three years if it's not a very active site. About 20 to 30 percent of cases returned through the Pila 360 program are upcycled into new cases. So. All those vague unanswered questions I had after doing quite a bit of research, I assembled them and sent them off to the company, hoping that someone would respond. And to my surprise, I was responded to very promptly and politely, and I was treated with respect on all my requests and almost all my questions were answered. Some of the omitted information from the questions did worry me and continued to beg the questions I already had. Something I found out while actually just filming this video is that Pila used to be part of a program called 1% for the Planet, where companies donate 1% of their profit to nonprofit organizations that are supporting the issues they care about. But I'm no longer able to find Pila on the directory, and they've also taken the logo off of their website. So I don't know if they've failed on this altogether, but I'm very disappointed to see this. Also, Pila's case composition is very misleading, let's say. Um, first of all, let's dive into some definitions. So biodegradable means that something can break down with the help of microorganisms, but there is no set time limit on how long that takes. Compostable means that it must break down within a set time frame without leaving any toxic residue. Ironically, these items that are compostable often won't break down in the landfill environment because the biological processes that take place require oxygen and often landfills are sealed from outside air as to not create leakage. Now biopolymers are any large structural compounds which are produced by cells of living organisms. Flaxstick, the material used to make pila cases, employs a starch-based biopolymer, making up about 35% of the case, and it's fortified with the spongy flax sheath which is another 10% of the case or so. You can see it if you look at a Pila case and the little speckles are the pieces of sheave. These also apparently help absorb the impact if the phone is dropped 
and it creates a prettier, more organic looking product, in my opinion. However, this leaves 55% of the case's content uh, unaccounted for, and there's no further elaboration anywhere on the site, and I even made a point to ask the question whether there was any oil-based products or petroleum-based products in the case, and they did not answer that question. So it makes me very skeptical about the actual composition of the cases, and I would really like to see some more transparency in that department. The journey of peelless glasses has been confusing and misleading through my research and even through some of the questions that I was able to ask and have answered. Originally, Pila dropped a line of sunglasses called Pila Vision, and they were supposedly 100% biodegradable. Now I can't even verify whether there isn't any plastic in the current line of sunglasses and glasses. They've expanded it a lot. The glasses section of the Pila site is called Sway now. I confirmed that there are no biodegradable lenses or screws available, so and the site says that they need to be removed before disposal of the glasses. So I'm not sure what happened to those original supposedly biodegradable lenses in the Pilavision glasses. And also, if these glasses are including anything plastic or non-renewable or oil-based, this company is all about being anti-plastic. If you remember, the initial mission statement was to remove reliance on plastic, and the original inspiration for starting the company was supposedly to replace the niche for plastic to be um, used in frivolous products. So I thought that was really shocking and disappointing that it just seems to have turned into a normal glasses company in a way. Now I was able to find some information on the frames actually being able to break down, but it said that they're supposed to happen in an anaerobic landfill environment. Um, so basically not compostable. There's no information or images of partially broken down sunglasses or anything that I could find that supported these claims. I also found out that none of the glasses have been recycled or upcycled and that they're just holding on to them for now until they get enough. But don't be fooled into thinking that your glasses will be recycled if you send them back to Pila. This was the only question that I asked the representative that I was flat out refused an answer to. They did not want to disclose the name of the partner. Um, there are some details about this labor partner they have in China. They're located in Hong Kong. They employ about 800 people and they were founded in 2000. Obviously there is concern over unhealthy or unfair working conditions for factory workers, especially in a labor market such as China. And the refusal to disclose this information tells me that the company is more worried about what might be discovered if that information got out than the peace of mind that they can bring their customers by being transparent about this kind of thing. Transparency, I think, is the biggest thing to help fight against greenwashing for a company, and lack of transparency is the easiest way to create greenwashing. No company is perfect, obviously, and market competition is a real thing, and the world isn't designed to help sustainable companies succeed, but I think being honest about what's going on and trying to work with your user base is one of the most important things you can do. Now the carbon neutral thing that I mentioned earlier, having any kind of money going toward offsetting carbon use of companies is going to be beneficial in the long run, but they only had to pay $7,709.55 to negate all of their estimated carbon consumption for the past year which was 1,497.2 tons of carbon dioxide or equivalent gases. This is the equivalent of about 168,471 gallons of gasoline for cars in terms of carbon emissions, which is about $500,000 if you use 2021's average gas price of $3 a gallon, which today I wish I was getting $3 a gallon. So I just wanted to call that out because it does seem like while they are paying some money toward this carbon neutral thing, it doesn't seem to fully encapsulate how much the actual cost of the carbon is on the environment. The last thing I want to call out is that Pila products are pretty expensive in general. The Pila phone cases new will run you about $40 to $60, which is a lot for a phone case for most people. and. Some of their other products, like Lomi the countertop composter, are $500. Having products be so expensive makes them so inaccessible to a lot of people, and making the biggest changes in sustainability is all about making widespread change, and so I think luxury goods and a small percentage of people being interested in these products isn't exactly going to change the world, even though I do like the core idea.
So now I'm going to give the Peelit Company a rating based on some of these topics that I've talked about, and I've categorized them into four subsections. Transparency, I'm going to give 25% of the rating. Everything under this includes greenwashing or misleading language, the Chinese labor partner being secret, uh, also dishonesty or lack of clarity about the glasses, as well as the Pila case, the flax stick composition, whether it includes any petroleum or oil-based non-renewable products. They also had some lofty claims and clever wording to kind of mislead readers. An example from the website is, we plan to help our partners move to renewable energy. There's no data or listing of the partners or anything about current status with renewable energy. There's just a lack of detail here that makes it hard for me to just believe this statement that's been thrown out with any grounding behind it. The Pila 360 program is also just holding on to the glasses. I think it's worth mentioning that on the website just because they have FAQ sections and uh, things that already cater to kind of these more detailed questions. The case composition, I think it's very misleading. More than half the case is made from non-renewable resources, and I think that a lot of people see these products and they think it's totally plant-based. However, I do have to give it to them that they self-report all the carbon used for producing all of their products. I think this is very thorough, and the fact that they self-publish it on their website is a big deal. They also answered questions about the company very quickly, and uh, were able to give me good, honest answers for most of the outstanding questions that I had, and it shed a lot of light on the current state of the company. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bad outweighing the good here, and I'm only going to be able to give them a 4 out of 10 for this category. Innovation is going to be another 20% of our score, so innovation is sourcing resources in clever ways, fresh ideas that stimulate or disrupt the current industries in the world or build up the sustainability industry in some way. I really love what they did here, finding the, the waste product of the flax sheave and incorporating it into something that could be new. So I think Pila has done a really great job of branching out to a lot of different products and trying a lot of different angles to creating more sustainability. For example, Lomi, the countertop composter, is very different than a phone case product, but has applications um, that could be really beneficial in an American kitchen. Now, Pila cases were the first product of their kind. Um, they definitely disrupted the industry, I would say. There's a lot of compostable knockoffs nowadays, which shows that there must be something to this business idea, and they're constantly pushing for new sustainable tech and acquiring new products. I'm going to give them a 9 out of 10 for innovation. Operations is going to be the largest chunk of our score. So operations is manufacturing, life cycle analysis, carbon usage or offset participation. So they do report their whole life cycle of the product creation and tracking all the carbon usage as well as offsetting. I think a really good step in the right direction could be focusing on running on renewable energy at this point. I was able to find one article that said some along the lines of in the manufacturing chain there could be some plastic involved in some of the materials and in shipping and transit, etc. Obviously it's going to be impossible for a company to manufacture and expect that all of their raw material inputs are going to get to them in organic, sustainable, biodegradable ways. So I'm going to be giving Pila a 7 out of 10 for their sustainability and operations. Now for social ethical, this is going to be another 25% of the score. This is anything having to do with donations, labor or animal use ethics. So obviously the labor partner in China is going to prevent me from adding a point in this category. Uh, sadly, they're getting dinged in multiple categories, but I think it's a really important issue. Pila is a certified B Corp. They used to be a 1% of the Planet member, which was my favorite nonprofit that they were a part of. Very sad to see that, and we'll definitely be losing a point. So I'm going to be giving Pila a 6 out of 10 for their social ethical category. Now, according to my grading scale, that brings Pila to a 67.7%, which is a high D. Um, I think there's a lot of room for improvement here. It's a small company. I think they've got a lot of the right ideas, but even in the short time that they've been around, I think they may have started to get off track from what their central message was supposed to be all about. I hope you enjoyed this review of Pila, and I hope you learned something about the company. If you have ideas for other companies you want to see reviewed, I would love to hear about them down in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I've been Sam, this was Green Theory, and as always, make good choices.